Hello everybody. How you doing? Well, I'm back at it. I'm going to continue on in this drawing that I've left off on for some time. And now that I've got the eyes in here, what I'm going to do is instead of going down just one little bit at a time, I'm going to get the base covering on this image done all at one time. With the lightest tone you see right here, I'm going to go ahead and get that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and get all the dark area down right here. Now, of course, the reason I'm going to do the dark area is because then I can see better these tones in contrast to the dark area. As long as it's white, it's very difficult to get the correct tone. So I need to get this background in there. Once you do that, however, and that's going to be done with uh, either uh, my softest charcoal or it's going to be done with carbon pencils. What happens is once you do that, you don't want to touch it because you'll smear into your drawing. And so in this case, I'm going to be using uh, this bar here that I made that allows my hand to stay above the drawing itself. Now for those of you who don't have that or you know some tape paper on your hand or whatever it is that you choose to do where you're actually going to slide your hand on the paper uh, you may not want to get the um, dark part on the right side if you're right handed or you're on the left side if you're left handed so that you don't smear it with your hand and also uh, it wouldn't help you to do what I'm going to do right now and that is I'm going to complete the whole base tone because when you come back in to do other uh, tone differences like the freckles the darks of the nostrils which is one of the things I'm going to do right away though the mouth all these other dark tones you can see that are mixed in with the lighter tones here and here and so forth, your hand is going to smear it. So these are different applications based on how you like to draw. So for me, uh, since I have the benefit of this bar that I kind of put together in my garage here to fit my easel, um, I can keep my hand above my drawing and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way um, but I just wanted to make sure to cover what could happen if you do what I'm going to do now, but yet you like to slide your palm all over your paper. Well, you know, that your palm or whatever you put on your palm is going to act like a blender and it's going to blend uh, a lot of your drawing here and that's not something you want to do. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I need to mark off my reference points. Now what do I mean by reference points? Okay, once I put all my base tone in here, which is going to be the lightest tone that you see here, okay, once I do the whole face that way because I can darken the other areas on top of it, I may lose my initial drawing here and then I'll lose my reference as to um, where the nose starts and ends where the mouth the lips start and end and so forth so i'm going to come in here in the dark areas of the nose dark areas of the mouth and i'm going to put those in first so that when i then put my base tone on there'll still be a remnant of that um, darkened areas then i can use my measurement tools to further know where all the other items are on the face where they should go in respects to this drawing. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'll make sure that I'm centered in the camera here. I can move the, move the paper, I can't move the camera. It's firmly mounted to the ceiling, so this should, I think this should do it. Yeah, it looks like it's in the center. Okay, very good. Uh, so let's go on. And get right into it. So, to do this, the dark areas here, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my darkest pencil. 
All right. And in this case here, I guess I'll use, there's a lot of dark pencils here. I have this uh, Conte a Paris Pure North 3B, which is a very dark pencil. All right. See if you can see that there. And let's see what else I have available here that I can use. Okay, I have this Primo Elite Grande number 5000 pencil that I can use. It doesn't matter. They're both going to come out black. So I'll go ahead and, and I'm just going to use the Conte right now and we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to start with the, the nostrils. You can see it's solid black. So that's going to give me a reference for where this is on the drawing. So let me go in here and outline it in black. Nice black charcoal. Now I see that from here, if you can, I'll zoom in in here a little bit so you can see the darkness, the very black area goes from here to there. It doesn't go all the way around. You might be tempted to draw this all the way around, but that's not where I have the absolute darkness. It's just here and it stops right there. And that's fine. So I'm going to stop right there and to there. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken that area in. Get a little roundness there. All right. And that's all I want to do right there because a lot of this area here is going to actually start getting lighter. You can see it starts getting, it's dark here, but then it starts getting lighter right around here. Oh, that did not help. All right, so you get that in there. Just the upper part here, which I know is, is dark. And that's all I need. Now I have a reference. Now I know exactly where this nostril is when I blend everything else. I'll still be able to see this area right here. And this will tell me where I am on this face. Remember this face is one and a half the size of the uh, original drawing. Okay, let me get rid of some of the mess I made here. And hopefully I didn't create freckles that I'm not going to need later. All right, get my brush, and I don't mind that little dot there because that's in that dark mouth area. All right, so using this pencil again, that's the other area that I want to take care of. But first, I'm going to take care of this nose, which looks like I'm going to need to go dark from here to there, and then just in here about right there. So this one goes pretty much from here. Paper's moving, can't have that. And I want to go all the way to here. Okay. And then I'm going to darken that area in just a little bit. I don't need to do the whole thing just now. That's just going to reinforce also this outline of the nostril, the inner part here. All right. So that's all I'm going to do right there is just get that down. Now, I tend to blow on my drawing a lot. That's just something I do. But every time just before I'm ready to blow on my drawing, I suck in all the moisture in my mouth to make sure there's none in there because I don't want to spit on my drawing. Okay, so just be careful. I, I know that it's taught never blow on your drawing, but we're, most of us anyway, I would imagine, are adults here, and you can, you can control your spit if you're 
cognizant of it, so I'm not going to make up rules that are unnecessary. If you, it's your drawing, and if you feel you can do it without ruining your drawing, go for it. All right. So now I'm going to do the mouth from here to here. That's the dark area, and that's going to give me the edges of the mouth all the way across so that later I'll know exactly where they are. Now there's nothing down here right now so I can rest my palm in case you guys are going, hey didn't you just say, yeah I did, but I don't have anything on there right now, but once I have the stuff on there then I'm not going to be wanting to put my my hand in there. And I try to get this as dark as I can. And I'm going to be careful not to fill out the whole area. I can always add more darkness later. What I want right now is reference points for the most part. Okay, so this way I'll know where the, at least the outlining is. And then I can shade it in darker later. Okay, but I don't want to lose this reference line nor do I want to draw dark lines on all my reference lines. I can only do that for areas that are actually dark. Anywhere else and you'll make it look like a cartoon or a coloring book. And you don't want that. Okay, I have a video on uh, no lines. And uh, I, will, I will put a, uh, um, what do you call one of those cards? Right there it is. See that? So you can click on that and see my video on no lines. Okay, so that's a good outline for this dark area here. I mean, I could go a little bit into the mouth if I want. I got plenty of room to do it, but there's no need for me to finish this part now. Now that I got my reference line. I got a lot of smoothing and blending and and making a fine edge and so forth that I'm still going to have to do some cleanup most definitely. So I'm not going to get it all done right now. But we'll get some of it. I'll just get close, but not all the way. How's that? Okay. All right. Okay, so I know where the edges are. I know where everything else is here. I don't have to push this so that I make a mistake. Okay, so I've got reference points here. I got reference points here. And let's see, do I need any others? Okay, and of course the outside of the face is a reference point, And that's all going to be bordered with pure darkness. So I'm going to go ahead here, let's see. And I'm going to... See, I got a little bit under the nose here. I think I'd go ahead and do that. That'll make my life easier later. Well, it's not that dark, it's, but it's on the dark side. But I'll just give it a little bit like this. And then I can see from here into the nose there. Okay. And that will give me the distance of this nostril here. So I can get away with that. And it looks like that goes in like so. Okay, all right. 
And then we have here, which is light shading. I'm going to just do this light shading you see here. I'm not pressing down on it. It's very light and it'll blend out. All right. Just so I know where that is, a little cleanup, a little dab will do you. All right. And this here is the um, Tombow Mono Zero. It says it's a elastomer eraser, but it's a pencil eraser and it's a very important tool in my arsenal. All right, now, so we got our reference points in here. So even if I cover this whole area with this tone right here, at least I will have places from which I can measure from now that I have the eyes, I have this, I have a mouth, and we also are going to have the outside of the face. That will allow me to gauge where every item is on this face as I add the details on the top. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this dark area in there. All right and I can see where it needs to go. So, let's get that going and uh, let's see, what should I use with that? I think could use something bigger than this. Uh, okay, now I have this carbon sketch. This is carbon, it's not charcoal, and it's probably the darkest thing I have. And you know, I think I'm gonna go with this just for giggles. All right, so from the looks of this, the dark area goes in about, oh, one, two thirds from the edge into the square, two thirds, so about right there. So two thirds comes out to be about right there. Okay, and this all comes up to about right there. All this will be covered anyway, and, and we got what you call the hair that's going to be coming in. You see that? So not going to worry about that. This does not need to be, nor should it be, a sharp edge. Don't make this a sharp edge. This is all going to be pretty blended in. It's going to come from the dark, and then it's going to get lighter and lighter as it gets into the light. So don't worry about making this a, a uh, really hard edge. Right now I'm just kind of marking my territory, kind of like a dog does. <laughs> all right. I do not want to lose this reference. Okay. And this line here that I'm doing will go away. It will disappear. All right. So don't worry about after you, especially when you watch my video on no more lines, that areas like this where you know you're going to blend it out. This is just to make sure I don't lose my reference when I start to do the face tone. All right. All right, now I don't have any pencil here, so I'm gonna to have to gauge it. This looks like it goes almost up to this line here, so roughly here. Then it kind of comes out to here a little bit. There's a, comes out here and then goes back in again. So what I'm going to do roughly here is I'm going to just kind of guesstimate at this point it's not going to need to be that precise and it'll still come out wonderfully but that looks like it comes all the way to there okay yeah I'll just do this that's all going to be nice and dark anyway so it's not a big deal all right okay wonderful pencil all right very soft it's going to get really dark here in a moment. All right. All right. Let me get this out of the way. You can see I'm going to go with the whole dark area, so you don't need to stare at that very long. All right. So let's take care of this real quick. I'm using the side of the pencil for right now. You're just getting a 
Nice little base going here. And I'm going to blend that in and then we're going to go for solid. Okay, but this is this is just how I do it. I mean, how you do it is up to you. This is really not a difficult thing to do. You, you want to just make sure that there will be no white of the paper showing when you're done with this whole process because it has to be a pitch dark background. Be careful not to get into your drawing area itself. It might be a bear to get, get this carbon off. Okay, so be careful with that. And this is where it really is nice that I have tape off my borders here so I can be sloppy on the edge here and not ruin that nice sharp edge of my drawing. Okay, I slow down and I be real careful on that edge there. And doing it this way is a time saver compared to you know, doing one square at a time, I find that not to be my style. I, I find that very, um, I know some artists um, and some really good ones, they tend to do more of the square by square by square. Very meticulous. I don't do that. I use the grid to help me gauge where everything is and draw things in proportion. And then... The rest of it is I eyeball and measure and, and get details in as I go along and I go all over the map. You've seen all my drawing videos. I don't go one square, one square, one square, one square, one square. Ah, I can't do that. We all have our own styles. There's no such thing as right and wrong. Remember, art is an expression of, your, of yourself. It is not some kind of book of rules. I don't like it when people tell me that I can't do this or I can't do that, that it's it's not right, you shouldn't do that, it's not fair or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> fair to who? You know, if you don't like it, you don't have to look at it. That's art is subjective. You know? Okay, I know if my tape's leaning up here, I don't want it getting underneath the tape like it just did. Now I'll tell you, these carbon pencils, they're awesome, but you will wear them down so fast. Make sure that you buy enough of them because they wear fast. And get pencil extenders if you want to be able to use all the pencil because they become small little nibs. You don't want to throw them away. I use my pencil extenders and I get the most out of my pencils. You know, it's money. Right? All right. I was about ready to resharpen this, but I noticed the whole other side has still got plenty of uh, carbon on it. So I just turn it over and keep going. Everywhere that I'm scratching here with this carbon pencil is going to be solid, okay? You're not going to have these black lines. You're not going to have these white areas here. None of this is going to be here when I'm done. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up with a way to blend it. And I think I'll just use a Q-tip to start. And if that doesn't work out, I'll use uh, some Kleenex. And just kind of blend it in there. You want to get it all over that white area. Make sure there's no white showing through of the paper. Okay. You want a nice, dark. And the nice thing with this, by the way, is it allows you to get much closer to the face without going into it. As you can see right there. You have more control. So the Q-tip works really good. Some of you call it cotton swab. I've been calling them Q-tips since I was a kid, so because that was the name brand my mom would get. And I'm just going to make sure that I.
make it nice and smooth and cover everything. Slow down a little bit as I get close to the face, just like that. Okay. And be careful because there's a lot of dust, as you can see, and you don't want to get that to smear all over your drawing, so just be careful with that. But see how nice that's coming out? And see, this is not black. This is more like a charcoal gray is what it looks like. So it's only the base. We're going to have to go over it again with the same pencil. That's because I want to use the same pencil. I could use something different. Like soft charcoal, that'll work too. Don't use graphite, not if you want that real contrasty look. Trust me on that. You'll get nice drawings, but they're not very realistic. Not like black and white photograph realistic, which is what I per prefer myself. Maybe you don't, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. To each their own. I can only teach what I like, right? All right. The best part, it's free. Some people don't like that I teach for free. I say, oh well. You know, I get it. I don't begrudge any artist that needs to make money from his craft because, quite seriously, I mean, I'm not able to do this as much as I like because I have to make a living. And if I could make a living just doing this, making videos of drawing, that'd be great. But unfortunately, there's not enough support at this time. So maybe when my channel is a little bigger, um, I can spend more time. You know, when you click the like button on my videos, you help YouTube or you pretty much tell YouTube that this video is worth recommending to others. Okay, so clicking the like is so important. Subscribing helps because that means I get some people who will watch more than just one video that they want to be notified, which reminds me that you'll need to click the notification button, otherwise you won't know most people won't know when I've uploaded my next video. So you'll want to uh, also click the notification bell. All right, now I've got to uh, sharpen my pencil. And I'm using, in case you're wondering, on my desk here, and I have a video on this, this sharpener. And if you want to learn more about this sharpener, I'll put a card right there so that you can check out that video. This is the heavy duty and I love it. And it does big diameter pencils all the way down to the small ones. So I can sharpen my 9XXB pencils in here. And this is a really good sharpener because it does long points. So let me uh, adjust the hole here. And then... All right, now I got my point. When I do carbon and charcoal pencils, any of these electric sharpeners, they can snap that tip off really easy. And that's why a lot of artists will use exacto knives and then they'll use sandpaper, such as this right here, to make a tip. Well, I like to use a sharpener and get a very sharp point on it, like that one there, but you gotta be very ginger with it. And just right when you feel that it's done its thing, stop. Now for this, of course, I don't need such a sharp point, but that's the sharpener that I use by my drawing desk, so it's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead now and actually the sharp point is helping me get into the edges here with the tape. But now I'm going to meticulously draw this dark and not let any of the light shade 
show through. And this will take me a while. So I'm going to stop talking here and I'm going to put this part into super fast motion so that we can get past it because this is all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my carbon sketch pencil from Generals and I'm going to make this all solid black. Okay, now what I'm doing here, I'm stopping the fast speed here for a second because I want to explain something. I'm also using my pencil here to move all the excess dust you see that comes off this pencil, the shavings or whatever you want to call this uh, that's left over. I'm going to push that down because I want to get it away from my, my drawing and if I blow it, it's going to darken everything up here, which it's already starting to do a little bit, but this is the part that gets matted out in the frame so I don't worry about it. But while I'm doing this and I'm coming in here and I'm kind of doing more down strokes in layers so that I don't show any white, I'm making sure that any of this dust that I'm pushing down like a broom. I'm using my pencil like a broom, you see that? And just kind of getting it out of the way and that leaves less up here for me to worry about. If I take a Q-tip up here and I start to move with the Q-tip, it will lighten it. And I don't want it lightened. I want this thing to be as dark as possible. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up and I'm also gonna sharpen my pencil again. You can see how quickly it wears down doing this kind of work. There's a lot of area to cover and not a whole lot of pencil to work with. All right, here we go. Okay, now I've got all this dust down here and I don't want it to keep on going. So I'm going to use this Q-tip and I'm actually going to use it to perhaps even apply it onto the existing base tone here. To actually get some use out of it. And just so you can see what would happen if I was to do this all the way up here, Take a look at here and notice that the Q-tip actually will lighten the background. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but then I'd have to go over it again anyway. I want this thing so dark because I want it really, really contrasty as the finished product. One of my drawings, The Girl on the Wall, this is how I achieved that look of her coming out of the darkness. I'll, sh I'll show that image uh, right there. And so you can see why I want it to go dark. Okay. Just moving it around. Got plenty of it. And waste it here. See how I just lightened up right there? See, I don't want it that light. I'm going to dab that back dark again, and it actually worked amazingly enough. This dabbing doing a pretty good job. I'm going to see what I can do up here. Now, this is kind of a discovery mode right here. I will admit, folks, that um, I never done this part like this before, but 
I am getting some really nice results here, which would mean that I will remember this for future drawings. So as you can see, I'm still self-learning new techniques. Look at that. Look at how it's covering everything, and then I'll get the rest of that dust off shortly. Because I would smear this downwards, but I didn't think about dabbing it. And when I lightened it up here, I said, oh no. But I knew that would happen, because that's what I warned about. And yet it darkened. I said, whoa. It darkened when I dabbed. So, not, all, not only that, but it's kind of an interesting texture, though I'm not going to leave that on there. I need solid dark here, but, but it almost looks like you can use that as part of her hair, or, you know, the, the part that you can barely see in the darkness. Just little hints of something that you just can't quite make out. And thus, sometimes, you know, your art just is a matter of happy accidents, you know. And I've done that a lot of times. Where I will do something, I'll try something else, and I go, wow, that looks like this or that. And then you make textures that you didn't know were possible. And you come back here. Don't, don't go on my paper. And I'm making sure I keep drawing... The, you know, keep spreading it with the dark side of this um, right here rather than go to the, the clean side because the clean side will start wiping it back up again. So don't, don't twist your cotton around for this part. Keep using that dark part.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this Kleenex here and I'm going to just test this out real quick to see what happens. It'll likely lighten it up, but then I'll go back over it again if so. But I'm kind of curious, so this is a good time to test out something. Okay, so I want to get some of those lines out. And this does make a really smooth blend. It's lighter. I, I do want it darker. So I could go back. And I want to see if I could also take up some of this excess doing this. And it appears I can. So there's something we learned together right there. Okay. And might as well make things a little consistent here. But you see how it lightens it up? Okay. I don't know if you can pick that up in the camera. So I'm going to have to go in there and uh, and I got to be careful with that even though that's going to be blended out anyway uh, into the skin. But you got to be wa you got to watch out for stuff like that. So anyway, just making some new trash here. So I'm going to have to go over it again to uh, get it as dark as I want. But this is a lot of area compared to the even the darkest drawing I've done before. So I'm definitely trying to determine the best way not to get those lines in there. My electric sharpener was uh, was a little too much for this very soft pencil, so I went to the to the hand hand one here, the General's all art one works really good for these kind of pencils. Well, I have a little more to go here to finish this up. But then I'm going to go over it again. I want this pitch dark. So I can't leave any white dots or anything from the paper showing through. Which is why I use the Q-tip to blend a lot.
Well, there we go. We're getting there. But I am completely exhausted. And in light of that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to conclude the video right here. And then in the next video, we'll then get into shading the base tone for the face. Look at my hands. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.